This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Between the portal standing upright and lashed to the narrow deck, and Jack's increasingly large dragon sprawled in front of it, Malik marveled that the gateship hadn't tipped over and plummeted to the ground far below. Neither dragon nor portal weighed a great deal, but having the ancient artifact that the ship was meant to fly through balanced on top of it was asking for trouble. If they ran into any storms, Malik would have to use magic to protect the vessel and its load from the wind. How the gate ship would navigate underwater, he didn't yet know. But Lieutenant Vincho had been banging and clinking at the portholes and spreading what smelled like pine pitch over the seams since well before dawn. You are prepared to leave? Uthari asked from the deck of the Soaring Eagle, one of twelve mage ships being readied for their own journey. A full day and night had passed since Captain Rivlin's report about the fortress. The lack of updates since then suggested the Star Flyer and the two mage ships that had flown south with it had been destroyed. Either there had been no survivors or the Domegers had been too damaged for communication. Both scenarios were grim, and Malik felt like he was shirking a duty by not going with the fleet to face the dragons and their new fortress— but he had another assignment. I am, Your Majesty. Are you certain you don't wish to accompany us? Malik gestured to the deck of the long, narrow vessel, though he expected Uthari to reject the offer. Uthari wouldn't find Shikari an appealing shipmate, and Malik couldn't imagine his liege riding on something so pedestrian and lacking in comforts. He was surprised Uthari wasn't taking his yacht this time— though it was possible he didn't want it damaged or destroyed by dragons. If Jadora is successful in finding a way to get rid of the parasites in your bodies, she would be able to deliver the treatment much more quickly if you were with us. Thus far, neither Uthari nor Jadora appeared changed by their microscopic invaders. The parasites were, Malik reminded himself, a different species from the bacteria he'd been infested with on Nargnoth, but the similarities were enough to prompt him to make comparisons. When he'd been exposed, less than a day had passed before he'd started losing his composure. I am aware, but with Tonavin gone, I must lead the fleet myself. Even across the distance between the two ships, it was impossible to miss the coolness in Uthari's gaze. Watch your back on this mission, Malik. You may believe those two care for you, but you travel with vipers. Malik didn't argue, but he knew he had nothing to fear from Jack or Jadora. He'd seen their thoughts before they'd developed the ability to hide them, and they hadn't changed as much as one might have expected from people quickly developing great power. Jack's actions had been predictable. Had Malik been with him on the Star Flyer? He believed he would have anticipated the creation of the Kurzor and stopped it. It was hard, however, for Malik to mourn Tonovin's passing. His only regret about not being there to stop Jack was that Jack was now in trouble with Uthari. Malik might have invited Uthari to come along with him, but he was relieved his king wouldn't, else he might have sought another way to ensure control over Jack since his plan to infect Shikari with that parasite had failed. I know you believe you have their loyalty, Malik, Uthari continued when he didn't answer. But people change once they develop power, and you haven't truly known them that long. As I said, watch your back. I will, Your Majesty. And rest assured that I would not be upset if that engineer does not return. Uthari curled a lip at Finjo's back, 